Most people have heard of autism, but if you ask someone to explain what it actually is, they're likely to have some difficulty pinning it down. To be fair, even psychologists can't agree on all the details, but thanks to diagnostics manuals like the DSM, we have a symptom-based framework to go by. Autism is a developmental disorder with three facets, social abnormality, language abnormality, and stereotypical and repetitive patterns of behaviour. As a spectrum disorder, each person with autism will present symptoms to slightly different extents, something that can make it difficult and probably wrong to make sweeping statements about autism or autistic people. Autism is a really complicated subject. The term was introduced in 1943 by Leo Kanner, who wrote an article about 11 cases of what he called autistic disturbance of affective contact and desire for preservation of sameness. All these years later, Kanner's original observations still form the basis for the classification of autism today. As an aside, you may also have heard of Asperger's syndrome, proposed by Hans Asperger in 1944. For many decades, Asperger's was classified as a separate disorder from autism. However, as the similarities between the two classifications led so many psychologists to suggest that Asperger's is just a milder form of autism rather than a completely separate disorder, nowadays people are diagnosed as having an autism spectrum disorder, reflecting the body of evidence that suggests that Asperger's syndrome and Kanner's autism are probably two sides of the same coin. Though there are instances of later diagnosis, autism typically develops in the first two years of a child's life, and it's four times more common in boys than girls. And in most Western societies, even though there's a general ignorance about the condition, autism isn't all that rare, with one in every thousand being on the spectrum. Early signs of autism include a failure to maintain eye contact, not reaching out to familiar adults to be picked up or cuddled, and not imitating social behaviours. As a child grows up, these symptoms can express themselves as social or linguistic abnormalities or unusual social behaviours. But autism isn't all bad news. In fact, many autistic people have exceptional talents that go way beyond the norm in areas such as reading, maths and music. So where does autism come from? Well, needless to say, this is a huge question, and there's still a lot of research taking place today to try and answer it. There's certainly some evidence to suggest that autism can be inherited. Twin studies show higher concordance rates in identical twins than fraternal twins. But there's no autism gene yet discovered, so evidence doesn't go far enough to suggest that it's simply a genetic disorder. Other hypotheses include the extreme male brain hypothesis and a lack of theory of mind. Work on autism and theory of mind is probably the most well-known and influential theory of autism. That's not to say that it's the definitive approach. A person's theory of mind is their ability to conceptualise someone else's mind as distinct from their own. Theory of mind can be tested using false belief tasks. A child is shown a box, let's say a box of Smarties, and he's asked, what do you think is inside the box? To which he obviously replies, Smarties. But when he's invited to open the box, he doesn't find Smarties, but coloured pencils instead. Now, after recovering from this shocking revelation, the child is asked to predict what a new person who hasn't yet opened the box will think is inside. A child who has developed a theory of mind will say, Smarties, they know that the new person doesn't yet know that it's not Smarties inside the Smarties box. However, an autistic child will predict that a new person will automatically predict that there are coloured pencils inside the Smarties box. Errors on theory of mind tasks like this are what have led many researchers to suggest a connection between autism and a lack of a theory of mind. As you can probably tell, autism is a huge subject and there's so much fascinating research still going on to give us more information and insights in the future. 
If you'd like more videos on autism and the related disorders, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. And if you've got any thoughts or questions, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. If it's your first time here, subscribe and click that notifications bell so that you don't miss out on another video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.